dating is like, for me, it's like the stock exchange, okay? If you want to be an astute investor, you have to have a diversified portfolio, and you stick to stock that perform, and you dump stock that don't perform. Girls, I think, do have a lot more, lot more power than they give themselves credit for when it comes to dating. I have been on a few where I am the bad date. I don't think I've actually ever been on one where the other person has been the bad date. That's why everything's magnified. On a date, you're sort of, oh, this person just interrupted me. Are they always going to interrupt me? Or, you know, this person is not a very good listener. I mean, are they going to be there to listen when I've got a real problem? It's all going to be about them, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, well, I've always got a positive attitude to things. I mean, I sort of think, well, if you're going to meet someone, everyone's got some good features. I don't expect a man to pay, but if he asks you out for a date, I think that that is only polite if they pay. Or at least pretend to offer to pay for dinner as opposed to, right, your half is... I haven't been on enough dates. I want to date more. Having said it's scary and horrible, I actually want to date more. <laughs> and we started talking. Movies, interests, books. He didn't have any. He worked in the steel mills in Newcastle and he loves steel. <laughs> Steel was all he could talk about. <laughs> and I have no idea why he didn't realise that my eyes were glazing over. Any question I aimed at him, he would twist it around to be about steel. <laughs> yeah, I remember actually being in the, t in the uh, bathroom, texting a friend of mine from uh, in England going, I'm in the worst state in the world, please call me. <laughs> I was wearing quite a few rings on my fingers and I'm a big one for the, you know, holding the face and putting my hands through people's hair. I just always think it's really rude if someone's talking to you to kind of lose eye contact with them. So I kept listening to him as he was talking. As I was doing that, rubbing my fingers through his hair, I got my ring caught in his hair. Um, and I didn't want to tell him because we were getting along so well that I just thought, <laughs> you know, I can just extract my finger without him knowing, it'll be fine. And I've gone to take a sip out of my glass, but I've forgotten that there's a straw in my glass and the straw has gone good and proper right up my nostril. He was like, you know, what are you doing? That really hurts. And I was like, nothing, just keep kissing me, just keep kissing. And I'm sitting there with this thing in my nose and I don't know why, but I thought, maybe if I don't move, he won't notice. And then we needed to get my friends over to help me get my finger out of his hair. And then that didn't kind of work because he said, do you need help getting that out? I knew I'd made a mistake on this date, basically from the second that I went downstairs to meet him in his car. And I'm thinking, for someone who looked nice, I thought he would have a better car. And I... No, I had my hand on the wheel and he grabbed my hand. And I thought, oh, oh, he's grabbing my hand. He called me madam the whole night. Like, what does Madam want to do? Does Madam want to drink? And then he proceeded to kiss it. And I thought, oh, well, that's nice, a bit soon, a bit quick. But, oh. but before I knew it, it went past the kissing of my hand and my arm. It went to the finger sucking stage. I thought, OK, just calm down. I, I can handle this. There was chicken, there was peacocks, there was um, dogs, and there was dog poo everywhere. And he proceeded to suck every one of my left, my fingers of my left hand. But every time he would laugh, he would like slap his thighs really hard. And then if he was really laughing, he'd like do the double slap on the thighs. Every time I stopped the car, he'd grab my hand again and he'd continue to suck my fingers. He got out a beer coaster and he showed me on this beer coaster that like, this is people, right? And this is all the mediocre people here. And then this is like, the most successful, greatest, funnest people. And then this is like murderers and rapists and stuff. And his theory is that, like, he wants to be up here, right? And, and everyone else, they would just want to be here and they'd want to, like, drag, keep dragging you down, keep dragging you down. Like, to have animals in the house, shit everywhere, with birds, pigeons, chickens. I tried to convince him to get out of my car. Like, he just would not get out of my car. He tried ringing me up and I just said, no, I'm sorry, I don't live here anymore. I was very drunk. She wasn't very drunk. 
we were kissing and I threw up in her mouth. <laughs> like she was falling over drunk and I'm like trying to give her water and, and looking after her and telling her to stop drinking. She's like, no, no, I'm fine. Said something really lame like, oh, I've left my bag in the bathroom or something and went back into the bathroom. Um, yeah, and didn't come out <laughs> for about another 12 hours. Um, I kind of stupidly like turned her towards me and the next thing I know she's gone the like the gag and she's just let loose. Out from what I was told I passed out in the cab and I actually threw up on him in the cab as well. I don't know about you but I'm a, I'm a sympathy spewer so like getting thrown up on that's that's pretty much the limit for me. I um yeah pretty soon had to run to the bathroom and uh, and throw up because <laughs> just that smell gets to you I guess. I read that book, He's Just Not That Into You, and I became a bit obsessed with it and perhaps took it a bit too far and took it in the direction where I was just so keen to look for the signs that a guy was, whether a guy was into me or not, that I didn't kind of care what the guy was like. I'm actually quite an irritable person and dating has actually helped me get over the fact that I'm such an irritable person because you have to be quite tolerant. I just so don't want to be with someone who is not into me that I don't actually know what I'm into. <laughs> Behavioural traits are not the end of the world, you know. We can see past all that bullshit if what's inside is, you know, special. <laughs>